Men don't expect you to be perfect. No. We do not expect women to fit one specific mold. Yeah. Most women out there can find male suitors because we are actually far more forgiving of female body types and all their splendorous forms. <laughs> all right, just a guest. <laughs> so, question of the day. Since there's not a lot going on outside of Trump, Ukraine, and the Kurds, and Turkey, we don't have enough info on that yet, so we always try to wait. Yeah. This is something that's just been... Bo- Let me ask you... Do you totally unrelated? Do you buy into the whole idea of the unrealistic female body image standard oh. and that we live in an unfair society? Because you hear about this so much, and I, I feel as though everyone rolls their eyes when they hear a woman going, "It's you know, it's really hard for a woman today in the industry." We go, "Oh, okay." So let me, yeah, I'm, I'm not making a lot of sense. Let me, let me kind of <laughs> that's a rough woman set this wow. up really quickly <laughs> before we go to a clip to accept the idea of this double standard as established by patriarchy, the idea of an unrealistic female body standard in a cruel society. You have to accept three premises, okay? One, there's a universally accepted unrealistic body standard set for women. Yeah. Two, that it's enforced upon women by men. And three, that this standard is exclusively or unfairly applied toward women. None of those are true. I think that's why all of us yeah. are sick with the fat pride and everyone uh, talking yeah. about how women are upheld to some unrealistic standard. Yeah. But lest you take my word for it, here are some other people making these arguments. The double agent for the patriarchy is basically just a woman who perhaps unknowingly is still putting the patriarchal narrative out into the world. But you are like selling lipstick, us something hair extensions, fake that, eyelashes is, and that right. really Tour. doesn't make us feel good. You're selling us a, an ideal, a, a body shape. It's a double standard because, you know, there are men with really like beautiful oh. women yeah. that don't have great bodies. And, and yet nobody's saying anything about that. I think it hits a little too close to home with Portia Del Rossi. I think that's what she's upset about. <laughs> okay, a couple of <laughs> things here. Yeah. Um, This is not exclusive to you, women. And and I want to say, here's the silver lining. And this is why we get really pissed off when we talk about fat pride. Men don't expect you to be perfect. No. We do not expect women to fit one specific mold. We do not expect you to be a size zero. The beauty is, women, if you're married, your husband finds you attractive or your boyfriend finds you attractive. He wants to see you naked. Most women out there can find male suitors because we are actually far more forgiving of female body types and all their splendorous forms (laughs) than women are. And I think women, you're harder on men than uh, yeah. men are on women. So a couple of things. It's, first off, it's important to understand there is an ideal, there's a beauty standard that's set when it goes, you know, you're yeah. watching a, a film. We're admiring someone's beauty, of course. Yeah. That is something that actually exists. It doesn't mean that we expect yeah. everybody to look that way. And there wasn't a secret meeting behind women's back where we said, <laughs> hey, you know, we don't even <laughs> like boobs and butts. We're just going to throw this out there. Yeah to throw them for a loop. So uh, there was something recently, like this is every time some advertisement comes out yeah. where there's a beautiful person, the social justice warriors get upset about <laughs> yeah. it. I think this was, remember this, we have this, uh, it was a protein shake, I think, that sparked outrage in London. Asking women in big, bold letters, are you beach body ready? Women calling the ad campaign sexist and body shaming. Okay. Body shaming. Yeah, I don't know what uh, this term body shaming means. If you're ashamed of your body, then that's your own thing. And some of yeah. you should be ashamed of your body. Uh, look look <laughs> at their, their advertisements for men. Okay, right here. There you go. Look. Yeah. I'm one, How green, dare they? I'm yeah. one green smoothie away from that. <laughs> Oh my Just a gosh. little workout, we're dead. And we hear this so all the time. Ready. I think the reason, and this creates more of a divide, it's this divide and conquer between men and women where women think that men expect something from them that they don't, and then yeah. women throw out this idea that, oh, you know what, but it's okay for men to be fat. They're not held to these standards. Look, yeah. and they start naming comedians like John Belushi, not Jim Belushi, that's just, that's, that's, I mean, different. that's a bridge yeah, too yeah, far. Yeah. No <laughs> one likes that. Nobody. According mm-hmm. to Jim, I've seen uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation videos that are funnier than according to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> But let's look at the it. famous fat guys out there. You look at Chris Farley, you look at these yep, comedians. Yeah. No one was using them to advertise weight loss shakes. No. They weren't valued for their looks. They were valued for their contributions to comedy. Think yep. about this for a second. Cary Grant, Gregory Peck, uh, up to Hugh Jackman. None of them were ever fat guys. No. None of them. This idea that there's no standard set for men or that men uh, cannot feel uncomfortable in their own skin, this is a lie. And it's also why these three premises are important. Has it been enforced upon women by men and it is applied exclusively to women? Um, I say no. No, I don't, I don't think so. And it's, it's weird to say, too, like that 
that, like you said, that there's some thing that we got together and decided this is what beauty is. Right. It's symmetry a lot of times that we see, and that can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes as long as it's symmetrical. They've done studies on this. Well, I also think it's it's far harder for a man to attain the standards that you would see in magazines while we're talking oh, about yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's do it right here. Here's a co cover of Cosmo the same month as a cover of Men's Health. <laughs> Which one of those is more attainable? Yeah, right. right. Like, this is, I get it. Men don't necessarily feel pressure. We don't look at that and go right. like, oh my gosh, can you believe? No, we look at it and go like, oh, okay, well, that guy had, that guy did something. Yeah, <laughs> He did, he did job, do a fellow. lot of things. Likely took diuretics yeah. and, and, and anabolic eat. steroids, and he was in a, a hot Epsom salt bath with wintergreen, dehydrating himself. <laughs> she just had to do yoga for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> All men expect of you women, all men expect is for you to not be wildly unhealthy. Yes. That's it. And here's something else, to push this idea of body positivity, now we've gone so far that yeah. we are actually encouraging people to be unhealthy. Cosmo decided to reverse course because that woman, of course, was offensive. Mm -hmm. Of course. And unattainable. No woman in, their na in the natural realm could look like that. Right. So. We now put Tess Holiday on the cover. I think we have another. Yeah, there you oh. go. Show me a men's oh, magazine that glorifies a fat guy like you won't find it. Yeah. No one is trying to find the guy who bathes in a pig trough and put him on the cover of Men's Journal. <laughs> Do they charge more for tattoos if your body is bigger? I have more. Got to be more, more time questions. and area to cover. Here's here's so. a study to, to, to back this up. A study of twelve thousand people showed that stats for for both men and women they're the same. About a quarter felt very to extremely satisfied with their appearances regardless of gender. Hmm. Um, and, and this is something else too, this idea that it's dictated by men. And this is why I want this, I come bearing you tidings of great joy. <laughs> we don't expect this from you. And this is why men roll their eyes and say, oh my gosh, yeah. you have a victim complex. Like you just don't understand. No, we don't expect you to look like Kate Upton. We think she's pretty, but when you feel these unrealistic standards of beauty being applied to you, or you feel as though you have to live up to them, then all of a sudden, as you heard that first lady in the yeah. in the rouge yeah. and lipstick and the, the yeah. hair yeah. extensions. And, and everything she apparently hates. Yeah, as yes. Jordan Peterson <laughs> points out, well, the rouge is meant to mimic the sexual flushing that occurs when I was like, okay, well, you know, that's probably true. That's why you're putting on makeup. High yes. heels lift up the butt. He's a smart guy. But <laughs> let me ask you this. Here are the people, we're talking about something different, the entertainment industry and the fashion industry. Really, that's really more of a byproduct of consumerist culture. Yeah. Right, where they're trying to sell you beauty products. Well, do we really think that straight straight men are in charge of the patriarchy? I don't know. Let's go to the tail of the tape. It really is survival of the fittest. Okay. Omg. This is my new look. Mm, what? Should we make it in red? Yes. Ruffled shrug in vinyl. Busy and tacky. You're totally stuck straight. In the Dapper Dan look. That it has to be a pant and a cool jacket. Don't you give up on me. Real '80s. Kind of like knots landing. Oh, I didn't want to do one bunch of bullshit. Bullshit. Now just, just well, assume. Stern. Let's just imagine for a moment that a straight guy behaved that way with, <laughs> with women. No, Ooh. listen. Their, your bone to pick is with women who run the fashion and their gay male counterparts. Okay. Yes. I think we have this actually from Houston Press that a majority of fashion magazines they have female editorial staff because hashtag all women female empowerment. They're the ones who want you to look real thin. Hmm. This is something people need to understand as well. If you look at uh, women's magazines. Mm -hmm. Things like Cosmo or things like, uh, what are the women's magazines? Vanity Fair? I have no idea. No, Vanity Fair is, I, I don't know. That's like movies know. or something? Yeah, what are the women's Or magazines? you look at the fashion runway yeah. models, I guess. They're 17? the ones who look like there's something from a Spielberg film. Those are marketed toward women, right? What's marketed toward men as far as magazines, you know, that would maybe like Playboy or, or FHM, the women are curvier. The women are yeah, larger. Yeah. This is what men find more attractive. The glorification of super tall, super thin, ultra skinny, unrealistic women. And by the way, some women look that way. Let's not yeah. condemn them yeah, because no. you don't want them to develop an eating disorder. But that <laughs> idea is so that's the only way to be attractive is yeah. pushed by none other than your sisters and I guess they're gay male sisters. <laughs> yeah, the other sister <laughs> queen. This is the why allies, we're like, listen, these I things guess. are what they are. Do not blame me, said yeah the entire row of straight men. We want to see yeah. you naked no matter what. We think you're attractive. <laughs> By the way, hit the notification bell. Uh, join Mug Club, loudwithcarter.com slash Mug Club because YouTube will probably shut this down because everything's offensive yeah, nowadays. So. I think something else that we need to look at is, is this something that is applied only to right. uh, women? Um, I... As it turns out, the bar is set higher for men. So yeah. let's look at this. If you look at uh, dating apps, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize yeah. this. Women actually are far more harsh in rating men's appearances, which surprised huh. me because I will yeah. I will concede that men are more visually stimulated. Right. Right. Yeah. Men like looking at attractive women. We just tend to see almost all women as attractive. It's like, hey, yeah. hey, there's a naked woman. What do you think? Oh, she looks good. Hey, there's another <laughs> naked woman who's an entirely different size and stature. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think it looks good. It's <laughs> <laughs> a wide spectrum. Look at that. That's a woman yeah. naked. I like that too. <laughs> but women, uh, as opposed to men who rate on a bell curve, yeah. women rate over 80% of men as being below average attractiveness huh. with these dating apps. So here's the thing. Even though many of you out there, women, you may, you may just look like this. You may look like an average woman, right? Right. Most men still see this, okay? Now, that being said, <laughs> for most men, you may look like this. You may look like an average man. Most women see this. This is what they're seeing, yeah. Oh, shit. And this is something else, by the way, while we talk <laughs> about unrealistic standards. <laughs> we're not just talking about magazine covers. Let me just, just, just trying to provide some understanding here. Just bridging the gender gap. Sorry, yeah. biological yeah. sex gap, because I, I can't bridge right. 57 gaps. Yeah. <laughs> not many gaps, at least. We have far fewer tools at our disposal, men, it's true. to cover up our shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Can't wear makeup, high heels, wigs. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that yeah. for a second. Well, you're a guy in high school. If you're short and you got bad skin, you're just out of luck. You're just screwed. You better <laughs> yes, hope that tough, puberty tough deals deal. you some better hands, and most <laughs> of the time, it doesn't. Yeah. Women you're can really cheat. Smart. And by the way, if you try to cover up a zit, if, you put li if you're caught putting lifts in your shoes, then all of your male friends will file you in the cabinet in the same drawer as all those gay male fashion designers. They will assume that if you put lifts in your shoes and use clear sill cover up on your zit, that maybe, just maybe, you want to be the next judge on Project One. <laughs> A reasonable assumption. Height is another one. I think we have yeah. some studies here. Women have unrealistic uh, expectations of men as it relates to height. I'm okay with this. Men one. who are taller are more successful <laughs> of, in of business. Course. Sorry. 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 Oh, is this? Oh, I thought you were about to. Say, I thought you hit your light there to say something. No, I didn't hit my light. He just. I said I'm okay with this one because I was tall from a very young age, so I never had to deal with it. I just. It's. This is one of those things where it. It's. It's. I think pissed everybody off. Every yeah. man off at some point. We don't necessarily know why. I think it's because we know this to be untrue. Women, if you feel bad about how you look, you probably feel worse than most men see you. That's what you need to understand. Most yeah. men view you through the very, lens. Every guy so, yeah. here, every guy here has a wife, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Every guy here has a wife, New to the and club, yes. they're all attractive. <laughs> yeah, my man. Right, and I say this yeah. respectfully. They respectfully. all look very, very different. Yeah. They, tall, thin, we have some who are shorter, we have some who are curvier, we have some who are thinner, we have some who are more athletic. We think that we all think they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Under, I don't know when this started. This idea that if we admire someone who's beautiful, and and no one expects this in real life. If you look at a Jessica Alba or I don't know a Kate Upton, we can look at it and say that it's nice. But this idea that men have been putting pressure on their wives or putting pressure on their significant other to look that way, I've never experienced it. I only yeah. see it in films and the entertainment yeah. industry. Where you, go, you know what? If you uh, if you uh, worked out every now and then, maybe you could uh, lose a couple of pounds. She's like the douchebag yeah, exactly. redneck husband. Yeah. I've never seen that in real life. Yeah. Every time in real life, you know what happens? A woman drops her clothes and the guy says, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it's a natural Game reaction. It's built well, look, I think women put an unrealistic standard on other women. Yes. Right? And it, so yes. I, I don't think that there aren't men out there that do this. I'm, of course, there are some douchebag guys out there with of unrealistic course. expectations. But we're not talking about those guys. We're talking about the mainstream guys. And I'm telling you, women, you have these standards for yourselves way more than guys do. My wife comes down and she says, hey, how do I look? And I'm like, honey, I'm a really bad person to ask this because I think you're beautiful all the time, right? And yeah. so a woman would be like, oh, don't do this, do this, put this here, do that. Like yeah. she would critique it and in a good way, right? But sometimes they just tear each other down. And that's not guys putting the pressure on, that's other women. Right. And the people who are championing this lie, by the way, are the people often uh, perched, uh, perched atop their mountain from the one industry where they actually do this, which is the <laughs> yeah. entertainment industry and the yeah. media. They're the ones creating these stories and these narratives, these right. sexist ads, these unrealistic beauty standards. Okay, go down to your local paper mill, for crying out loud. Go down to your local, I don't know, for, contract furniture company. Pick some kind of a local business and see if they are enforcing an unrealistic beauty standard upon women. The only place it happens is in the entertainment industry and Hollywood and the media, and they are the ones who about it happening, and then they pin it on That's us. Weird, yeah. This is what I'm just trying to say, women out there. Fat pride is a bridge too far, okay? But if a man is saying, we're not that interested in a land whale whose blood type is pudding, it doesn't mean <laughs> that we expect you all to look like Sienna Miller. It's okay to, as long as you take care of yourself, you're within yeah. the boundaries of general health. Most men find you attractive. No one expects you to look the way that you think for some reason you're expected to look, and the people who want you to feel that way are gay fashion designers and bitchy women who for some reason now have some kind of a bully pulpit. I say you should take them out and then take your husband out for a nice meal, take your clothes off because guess what? He'll be ready to go. Okay. 
shirt change. See, that's the magic of YouTube and editing. But uh, if you did like this segment on male and female body images, you might like this whole show. That's available at ladderwithcarter.com slash mug club. We did a full review of The Joker uh, along with your letters that day. Like a full hour of content. If you don't want to subscribe at ladderwithcarter.com slash mug club, which means that you're okay with this show going away forever because we've been demonetized for a long time, click one of these other videos, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And if not, then I don't, you know, I mean, I, I guess thanks for stopping by, but not really.